Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Karo Horono Koku in episode number 13 and 14 reactions. Okay, the previous two episodes. Episode number uh, 11, we got the fight with Bernardo. Bernardo versus Erman. And uh, we get a more detailed explanation of what happened uh, after Erman and Anna like you know kind of went away and Bernardo was helping them try to go away by distracting the enemies we saw what happened and he, he it was I guess it was like you know they kind of lied like Mendoza kind of lied where they said the whole thing about oh both of them had been ca captured and killed like Anna and Erman which kind of went him go into uh I, but I guess Anna was captured probably after, uh, later on uh, because you know like she was burnt in the stake so she, he like you know he lost everything and he even like you know killed the people the soldiers that were trying to kill him as well so all because of all of that we see how bernardo changes and um yeah he becomes this crazy type of like you know person who just wants to fight with Erman. And we he gets his fight. He gets his fight. The fight you know, happens and Erman is able to defeat him. And in almost in the end, we see him coming back uh, to his original like you know sense. And he you know like he spoke with Erman and yeah, that was the end. And uh, that was sad. That was a sad ending. Uh, nothing you can do about it. Uh, but the episode after that, which is episode number twelve, is even more insane. Where we see uh <clears throat> leon and alphonse fighting against mendoza and uh, yeah like mendoza tricks uh, uh, uh what's his name just a sec <coughs> oh my god something got in my mouth um okay uh mendoza mendoza got uh leon kind of uh trapped in a weird thing brainwashing thing where he was shown uh, the scenes of when her mother died and uh, when his mother died and he went crazy completely kind of transformed his like you know Ma Makayama kind of transformed and he went berserk killing people destroying like you know property and everything and just putting the whole place into chaos and uh, in, in, in the end like an Alfonso stopped him and uh, Alfonso took the armor Garo to him and said like yeah you're not uh, like you know worthy of it now and he took it for himself uh but i guess garo chose uh you know leon at that not leon sorry alfonso at that moment and he defeated mendoza it seems like he's died but i don't trust that i don't trust mendoza has died i'm sure he'll come out probably five or six episodes later <laughs> uh, and uh yeah like it seems everything is okay uh alfonso heavily admonishes uh leon leon has lost everything he just went on his way and erman is also heavily injured while uh alfonso goes back to his place uh, and sees that his mother has like you know killed herself and that's that's it and we in the end we see alfonso kind of jumping not alfonso sorry um leon jumping from a cliff i'm sure he'll be fine like he's a main character and i doubt he's going to die like that and uh we already saw Erman kind of falling down and there's that girl who we saw the laundry girl i don't know her name and maybe she'll like nurse him to health or something we'll see so yeah let's get started my god that episode was insane um yeah let's see what happens this episode this is episode number 13 of garo ono no kokui so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here thank you to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> oh, new opening, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. 
Whoa, what's happening here? There you go, he's alive. If he's been shown in the opening, I'm sure he's alive. <laughs> Right. Burning ashes. All right, so. Wait, how did he survive? That was a huge fall. Oh, he got washed up on the shore. Okay, what? Which places? Are they still in Santa Bart? Oh, the king. I'm sure the king will little by little recover after this because he was being fed poison by Mendoza and Mendoza's not here anymore, so. Oh boy. Okay. Right. Oh, so that's what they're saying. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, everything's at peace, kind of. Oh, there you go. Shady drawings of his face. What? Uh, but he he doesn't know where Alfon uh, Leon is. So I'm I'm sure that's bothering him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. Oh, Emma is asking her. Wait. Is she asking about Leon or someone else? I think it's someone else, it's not Leon he's, she's asking her about. Okay. Lara.
Traveler. Uh, well, he's being bothered. <laughs> what is it? I, I doubt this is Santa Bar. This is someplace else, isn't it? Ten days. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Damn, grandfather didn't say anything like what Okay. Lord. Oh, I'm guessing the the one in Wait, what happened? Why why did they not show her eyes? Wow, so what's happening to him? Is he like... Hmm? Okay. Something's weird here. The grandmother, her eyes were not being shown in the later part. What is that? But potato? Potato, isn't it? Thursday. Okay. She's talking continuous. Wolves. Probably not. I don't know. Probably not horrors. Maybe just normal wolves. What's happening to these people? Okay. I feel like they're kind of acting this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
Whoa, what? Horse again? Yep, I think so. My God, what is that? Is Oh, wait, who? Who's that? Oh, it's Rarman. Wait, he's out? I guess he's... He's, um... Recovered. Kind of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remaining horrors, okay. Probably. <laughs> Butterflies. Oh my god. All right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Well, nobody knows. Yeah. And he doesn't even know where he is. Like, nothing you can do about it. Just have to wait. All right, he, I, I guess he's kind of getting some trauma, traumatic PTSD, something like that. That's what's actually eating at him. Um ah. What the yo Calm down <laughs> Your grandfather has not spoken. I've seen it like Ugh. Oh, this is a peaceful place. Hopefully nothing bad happens here. Whenever there's like a peaceful place, it kind of gets destroyed somehow. Like that's what we see in animes. Especially animes like this, you know, where there's like constant threat of places getting destroyed and horrors attacking. Wait, these are onions? Oh, the same thing, yeah. Over and over. Oh. Can't go in. Oh. Hmm. 
<laughs> Wait, he fell down. Steps. There you go, he speaks spoken. What's happening? Oh, he's okay. They're eating. That's what he. Okay, it's kind of getting better, I guess. A little bit. Ah, there you go. He's come to help. No, I think he did it. Oh, okay. Irrigation camera. Hmm. Tough job. Not like that. It's like using one hand to. Uh, I guess you need to show him first, like how to do it. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Yep. Is that a knife in his? Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's falling asleep. He's a little bit too peaceful, I feel like. Something must be going on. I don't know, like, it kind of bothers me. Like, I've not seen any other people than these people. Like, where are the other people? If they're talking about a lord, which... Oh, I guess, they're... okay, there you go, there are people. <laughs> I'm like, where? Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. There it is. <laughs> hmm. Name.
next year okay Hmm. I'm guessing he's still sick, yeah. <sighs> hmm. Oh no! This girl is still here. Oh, I completely forgot about her. Wow. Is the ending? Whoa, that's a cool shot. Okay. All right, that is this episode. Um, that was episode number thirteen. Wow, I, <laughs> this episode was very peaceful. I feel like this that really bothered me throughout this whole episode. Like I really don't like the whole peaceful setting. It always kind of bothered me as to something's going to pop out sometime, or or like they're going to jump scare us with something. And <laughs> like I, this, this episode reminded me of that episode, you know, the one where uh, he gets, you know, like Leon gets completely just thrown out um, by Emma, like that whole scene where he kind of gets amnesiac and he winds up in like a village, random village where the, everything was like, oh, everything's so peaceful. But at the same time, like people were just, you know, there was like that, um, what was that? Those child traffickers or those the, the, that whole episode you know the the father of the church that one um like this reminded me of that and i was like okay something's surely happening here like what is happening but they kind of kept it very peaceful up until the end i'm like okay i guess this was like a peaceful episode <laughs> no hidden tricks to it i was i was trying to find out like when are they going to jump scare us with something and they didn't and i'm like all right then <laughs> Oh boy. Like, you know what? Why there was, I was feeling that weird feeling? Because the music in this episode, it was very unusual. Like the peaceful setting with that type of a music that was playing in the background continuously, it made it as like, you know, it was like a mysterious music, which kind of made me feel as if there's something going on behind this peaceful, like, you know, exterior. In the interior, something is happening and we don't know. And then they're going to like show that to us suddenly. And we'll be like, like, you know, like realize like, yeah, something messed up is going on in the background while everything looks peaceful. The music was kind of like that. That's why I was, I, I was thinking from the start of this episode that something's going to happen, but it didn't. So yeah. Okay. All right. This episode, we get to see Leon washed up in a show. Now, I guess he jumped into a river, I'm guessing, because if he jumped 
and fell into the um, ground, he would have died. So I'm sure he did not do like you know, he did not realize that he probably jumped and fell into a river. And because because of the sheer height, even though it's a river, he probably from the force of hitting the water, he became unconscious and washed went washed through the river and came to this place where this village, which is I'm guessing a lot. Uh, at a lot more distance than Santa Barbara, like this is probably somewhere far away. We still don't know what this place is, but according to the girl, we could guess that it's probably some place where it's very, uh, you know, like uh, at a very distance from cities. She says something about like, oh, this place has almost has nothing, you know, but I still want to you know, be here, which gave me the impression that this is probably far away from. Some big cities. Yeah, okay, he, he gets washed up here. This guy, how do you think her name was Lara? Yeah, Lara. Um, she finds him, and then we go back to Santa Bart where um Alphonse. You know, we 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 attend. You know, where we, we we see him. You know, carrying the his mother and you know they buried her and everyone like and everyone was present and all king was crying and uh, yeah he said like okay i'm going to devote my life and everything to the people here i'm going to protect everyone and and all the people okay so the what they're going with is that uh the de the demons got to the queen that's how she died because obviously like you know like they cannot say to the citizens that oh the queen uh, took his took her own life obviously they cannot do that that's a big no no like like this is going to make the people very anxious so to avoid that they said like oh the demons got to her and everyone was like this is sad but you know like now that our king is here alfonso is here he'll he'll make everything okay and you know the kind of everyone's like a lot more calm and collected because Alfonso is here and we go meet Erman as well Erman is being nursed by that girl what's her name I, I don't think they still told her name did they they didn't say her name anyways um I'm gonna call her the laundry girl <laughs> I don't know what else to call her or did they say her name I can't find it I don't think they did yeah. anyways um <clears throat> we see her like you know like patching uh Arman up and uh yeah Arman gets to know, know what's happening you know like alfonso was happening and in the city and all like he gets to know from her while here uh in this uh in, in that place in, in the place with that girl i again forgot her name um the white haired girl is her name her name is is it Garm? Is that her name? Let me check. Uh, or maybe it's something else. Just a second. Um, uh, where is it? Yes, it's Garm. There you go. I was correct. Ah, I remembered it. I don't know how, but somehow. <laughs> Garm. Okay, Garm is like, you know, there and we see Emma asking her about someone. Garm is saying, I don't know where if he's in, where he is. Like, you know, I still don't know if he's on a far off cloud or at the end of a sea. Now, I feel like this is someone else. I've, at first I thought she's asking her about Leon. Then I thought like, no, why would, like, you know, like, why would he, she, Garm say that he, I don't know where he is because he's in a in in, in, the, in that village like why would she not be able to track if it's leon so this is probably someone else she's asking for so <clears throat> yeah okay and she like you know goes on her own way and we're back to the village now we see leon is very suffering a lot <coughs> and he's like oh why did you save me why did you save me asking lara that and at first he like you know we can see the gradual change in leon little by little as at first 
you can see he's just in his bed you know, very depressed and everything like the food that she's bringing it to her and leon is just not moving from her bed his bed and you know very depressed and all and then the next day we see the grand now here's the thing the grandmother comes in and that's why i kind of got sus suspicious over here grandmother comes in at first now wait a minute what happened here okay the mom says like i'm going to go give my regards to the lord and yeah she, she, uh, lara says grandma says she'd like to hang the sheets they're not showing her eyes over here which was extremely suspicious for me i'm like what's happening why are they not showing her eyes you know that the window the thing the frame it was actually coinciding with her eyes and that was very i like you know these are like some small subtle hints of something actually going wrong you know in animes i've seen this like you know whenever like there's these type of situations these are like subtle hints that something is wrong that's why i was kind of thinking like oh my god something's going on with these people here but like weird enough nothing happened by the end like this is the only time we see her like that the grandmother after that she kind of again becomes normal normally talking to everyone and i was a little bit surprised why she was angry here like you know like and i guess you if you think of it kind of it, it's probably because you know like leon was just like sitting there not kind of not getting uh back up and just moping around you know in sadness maybe because of that she was angry i guess because she had a big frown on her face at that moment and uh, you know he's, she's just sitting there and that's why probably the grandmother was like yeah get out i need to do the sheets here and just walk outside you know take the outside air inside otherwise you're not going to get up from this uh emotional downfall that you are currently having this emotional you know thing you won't be able to get back out from it so go out uh maybe because of that she was angry i don't know and yeah but that does help him you know get up and go outside which helps him a lot he's able to see the outside you know world and not world sorry outside place and um <clears throat> we see him being a little bit bothered i'm guessing most probably because of his injuries he probably got injured a little bit because he fell from such a height and also maybe because he was not moving like just in a room like that maybe that's why his joints were hurting or something he was kind of like you know being bothered just walking and he got easily very easily tired and just sat down it was nice the whole place was just empty with fields and everything and you know like they're like taking up farming potatoes or onions i don't know what that was but it was something and uh, he she talks about um a lot of things mm. like <laughs> she's continuously talking she talks about her dad as well and she says like my dad was killed by wolves and he was like wait a minute is, is it a horror and now a little something is kind of still bothering me you know why because there's one thing that's a little bit suspicious the lord who is the lord of this place like the mother was saying like i'm going and like you know uh going to the i'm guessing by lord they means the person who owns the land i'm guessing maybe that's why like you know they're saying lord or calling him lord and like that person like i don't know i feel like something's going on still i'm feeling something is going on and <laughs> i'm probably i'm just i'm probably just a bit too suspicious of this whole peace peaceful setting <laughs> but anyways um so yeah he comes back and uh yeah now we shift to santa Bart again where we see alphonse kind of fighting horrors and like an you know, arman also comes him and comes in and just assists him and we see like you know he is kind of a person who protects the people at night as a knight garo knight while at the morning he's just doing his uh normal king work you know so 
here um uh, probably alfonso was a little bit guilty feeling a little bit guilty he was like oh where is leon and uh i mean it's like don't worry about it it's not your fault he needs to get up and uh you know move forward now this is the thing you know like like um there is a very fine line of like the whole thing that happened here you know the previous episode where they admonished uh leon uh which is i which, which is which is quite correct to do at that point you know like i i don't you know i i don't find it cruel that they admonished him because he deserved that kind of deserved that but at the same time it was not his fault and like here's the thing that's why i'm saying this is like a very fine line between this whole thing they went like you know they, they they decided to approach him you know and they decided to try to go through to him by the hard way by being strict and that works sometimes you know uh when you like you know sometimes when you kind of give someone the hard lesson by saying like oh you need to do this on your own stand up on your own you know it works sometimes but it heavily depends on the men mental like you know st stability of the person who you are actually uh, trying this on at that moment leon was mentally very weak he was not in a position to take that you know to take that scolding and jump up and be like yes i'll be able to stand up you know like because this thing if it's successful if this like you know going through the hard way by scolding someone by letting them know that yeah you've done done this wrong and you have to get up on your own if this succeeds the person you know who is able to get out of that place gets even stronger mentally and it's very good in the long run and because they're able to stand up on their own so this is a better method you know obviously but if the mental condition of that person is weak it backfires sometimes which probably happened with leon his mental position like you know situation at that moment was very weak he was like oh i've lost everything and that actually did not give him the positive encouragement but actually backfired and he just tried to kill himself like that's what i'm saying you know this is like a very fine line erman and i feel like alfonso as well as to some extent tried to go through that way and make him a better person but it backfired and he jumped so imagine what would have happened i i'm 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 guessing there was like a lake underneath or a water body underneath where he fell and that's why he was not he did not die like imagine what would have happened if there was no water body there or he, he he did not survive somehow if he really fell to his death just imagine what happened what would have happened like this is the thing like this is the thing that is kind of bothering me a little bit because i can understand where they're coming from they're trying to go and like, like especially erman is trying to make leon realize this himself which would be very good if it actually works but it did not work actually this way it actually did not work i'm guessing at that moment what you needed to do was um say nothing to leon kind of let him just settle down and then admonish him after a few days when he is a little bit out of the whole traumatic situation that he went through i don't know like um, or who knows who, what would have worked but i feel like the way they did this was kind of something that backfired and Leon could have easily died any time. So, like, like we 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 see, like you know, like Arman saying, like, I wonder where he is now because he he doesn't even know what happened. He's probably thinking, like, oh, he went on his own journey and he's probably just left this place. And yeah, he needs to pick himself up. He needs to realize this. I'm sure he doesn't realize that his son probably tried to kill himself. I wonder how how he would have reacted if he realized that somehow. You know, like I don't know. So he would have probably been very like he again like you know I'm I'm feeling like if Erman got to know that he jumped I'm sure he would have felt a little bit guilty as well just like uh, um, uh, Alfonso was feeling because at that moment the way Erman actually tried to 
get through to his son was something that backfired. But I guess Arman was not in the position to do anything as well because he himself was injured. He, he, he just, like, you know, just fainted at that moment. So I guess you can't say much about him as well because he himself was at, a, at trouble as well. So nothing you can do about it. Leon, uh, Alfonso had his own thing to do and Arman just fainted. And probably because of all of that, like no one was paying attention to Leon and Leon tried to kill himself. So I don't know. I don't know which is right, which is wrong, but this could have gone bad easily. You know, like this whole Leon situation could have easily gone bad. Thank God, like there was like a thing which saved her. I'm, I'm guessing there was a water body underneath which saved him. So yeah. Okay, now. Okay, the next part we see him actually kind of coming back little by little, kind of gaining his strength back again. <coughs> He's just eating like, you know, the, the thing from the field and talking with Lara. He, he said that, okay, are you not, uh, you know, like being bothered by just staying here all the time, you know, like doing the same thing over and over again. And okay, where is that part? uh okay yeah doing the same thing in the place day after day he asks like is that why you're traveling traveler he's like yeah there's probably a lot of wonderful places but i can't go anywhere even though there's nothing that's left this is the uh, land that my dad la father left us and uh yeah like he can see like you know she's pretty happy with what she's doing here this place is peaceful so and after that like you know they kind of had a, like a conversation about the harvest being bad and everything and you know there's a debt that they're also like you know having so and i think this is the first time we see leon actually coming and eating with them isn't it yeah so we can see him actually kind of jumping like you know kind of coming back gaining his strength again his mental strength again and uh, because of that conversation, I guess, from the next day onwards, he starts helping them. And he brings, like, you know, food and everything to the grandfather and he tries to help him with the irrigation canal. And at first he cannot do it. And his grandfather says, like, yeah, you need the technique to do it. Not only strength will help you. And yeah, and I think this is the f and then again, like now after working, he comes back and just falls asleep and I guess this was like the proper sleep that he had after so many days uh, of just, you know, like being awake and everything, being bothered while he was asleep. Like the, the, the exercise, the physical exercise got to him and he just fell asleep. And then onwards, he starts doing little jobs here and there. Yeah, everything's peaceful. The grandfather is also smiling and uh, the irrigation canal has been completed. Everything is happy. Uh, Leon tells Lara his name and I'm like oh my god when is something bad going to happen I feel like something bad is going to happen like everything's so peaceful like I don't know like maybe horrors will attack or something like what's going to happen here why is everything so peaceful here I'm, th I'm still thinking that I don't know I have this weird feeling something is going to happen to this place and it probably won't be <laughs> you know like seeing this happy moment this peaceful moment I, I don't think it'll be easy to accept if something happens to this village so oh boy and okay now then we get back to santa bard and boy oh boy look who's waiting for us there it's i again forgot her name what's her name um or Orti... octavia octavia why do i always forget her name octavia okay octavia octavia is waiting for us and you know what, I'll be honest here, I completely forgot about her. <laughs> I completely forgot about her existence. You know, I, I forgot that there was a character called Octavia here. And as soon as I saw her, I'm like, wait a minute, this girl is still left. I forgot about her for a second there. And yeah, like seeing her there and nobody knows that she's actually, she was working with Mendoza. Everyone thinks she was helping the king out and <sighs> she's probably going to start something again. I don't know, maybe try to revive Mendoza or something? Like, I, 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 I can see it happening, you know? Like, 
if Mendoza really is dead or something, something like that, maybe she'll tr somehow try to bring him back. Or something along those lines, we'll see. Or who knows, maybe she'll try to take revenge on her own or something, who knows. But she is definitely going to do something and uh, yeah, that will not be good. So yeah, let's see. Okay, anyways, that was episode 13. Uh, let's start with episode number 14. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. Let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Who's that? All right. <laughs> My God. Delgado. Wow. My God. <sighs> I feel like <laughs> probably never. I don't think it will ever will. Probably the king has to do everything like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a prince preparing to be a king. Okay. Portrait. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> He's like, oh my god. Dad was doing all of this. That was better. What the? Wait, is, is that a, that's not Alfonso? Who's that? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm like, that's not Alfonso. What the hell? Uh. Oh my god, one of them is missing. Gaia is missing, isn't it? Okay. Guessed it. What? Nope. It's probably here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. In disguise.
Ugh. Yeah, that's true. Diet, obviously he's doing so much. Oh my god, what's with this music again? <laughs> Whatever this music comes out. What? He fell asleep. Oh great. Um. Um yeah. What the random who's recently? Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. Roland Isabel Okay We we were getting to the interesting part and okay all right oh. all right he he's going to infiltrate the hello there <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh my god, here she is. Oh boy. Well, she found her him quite quickly. Yep, everything's fine. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, here we are, infiltrating the castle. What the? Ah! There you go, a bonus gift with it. Wait, what? They know each other? You're fighting um, a Makai Knight. 
I guess he cannot ha harm them, can he? Because they're not horrors. What is happening here? Oh my god, what is happening? Like, everyone's confused. Oh! Wait, then what are they doing? Is that feeding? Oh my god! This was what was happening and okay! Okay. Ah. Yeah, that's why he kidnapped him and brought him here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh my... What? Oh! It's... What? Curse. Oh. Wait and waiting. Wait, what the? Is this like? Kind of sounds like Elizabeth Bathory, doesn't it? Oh my god. I'm sure a lot of these are rumors and everything. Oh god. I'm sure a lot of this story is probably filled with rumors and everything. Oh great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yes, definitely. You know what would be funny? Yeah, yeah, it's for her. I thought about it. That's why he came here. Himena. <laughs> Lomeli. Uh, she probably says white or something. There you go. Ha. You know what would be funny if if Alphonse actually actually knew what he was doing, but deliberately acted like a fool so that he. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Anyways. 
<clears throat> no, the girl is here. Pana, yeah, that's her name. Wait, what the? What's happening? They knocked him out. The guard out. What the hell? Um, that was a trap. Yeah, what are you? Oh, okay. Oh, that was a transition. All right, I'm like. Oh my God. It's a horror. Oh, great. Yep. What the hell is happening? Why is... Why are you going there? <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. That's obvious from the whole thing, but. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wish to become stronger. Uh, oh my God. What a weird way. Wow, my God. This is a messed up situation. They were the one who did it, okay. Oh, and they, they, oh my God, they erased that with the thing. And this guy's free now. Okay, that was a mother too. Ah. Uh. Okay. Okay, his father, his dad is also completely. Again, horror versus horror. It's the same thing. The history is repeating itself. Isn't it? It is oh god wow Oh my god Wait is that like Isabel's reincarnation or something Fana I'm talking about Fana why is he, they why are they calling her Isabel Uh 
Okay. Wait, what happened to the guy? Yeah. Oh, so he's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. My God. What? Oh, there he is. Oh, boy. Oh, what the? Um, some Resident Evil. <laughs> Oh. Oh nice. There you go. Ah. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, he he'll probably catch her. Yeah. Oh. Jeep. Uh. <laughs> oh boy. Mm. Yeah. Is that's where it ends? Yeah. <laughs> My God. Okay, so. <clears throat> Like one thing I re it took me a little while to understand. I've always thought, you know, why do they take so much time to transform? You know, like if they transform in the beginning, they could have easily de finished the battle. But um, it suddenly like you know, I, it made me realize that okay, they had like a time limit. I I always forget about that. They have a time limit as to how much time they would be able to keep on the armor. So that's probably why none of them, you know, transforms first. They try to attack the enemy with the normal human form. Then if they see that, yeah, it's impossible to defeat this person, that's when they, like, you know, transform. Trying to, like, you know, conserve the time. If, like, you know, the Makai armor is needed some time else, you know, it'll come in handy. And we've seen, always seen, like, you know, like, whenever they, like, you know, wear the Makai armor, most of the horrors just die in one shot uh, except the stronger horrors you know but these type of horrors just dies in one shot uh, and i've always thought like why do they not do that in the beginning but yeah I, I i realized that yeah because of the time limit they don't do it in the beginning it's probably because of that i think all right that's the end Alright, so this episode was uh, more uh, focused on Alfonso's side, Alfonso and Herman's side. And, okay, at the beginning we can see Alfonso is, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> given the different tasks of a king, what a king needs to do. And since he's like a person, a prince, who's preparing to become a king, he needs more things to do. He even needs to, like, you know, attend the lessons, you know, the different lessons that he attends. Like, 
what were those lessons the different like you know mathematics and the other like you know the other educational lessons the some kind of like you know uh other like you know fighting lesson or whatever like these lessons piano or stuff like that i guess <laughs> they he needs to attend those lessons as well at the same time the different you know like uh what do you call them like greeting some count or some other like you know people from the uh, upper you know like echelons of the royalty you know then he, he needs to also greet them have dinner with them and uh, you know these type of other duties that a king needs to do uh, painting you know other like making a portrait of him and uh, and at the same time also handle his dad's work uh, which is i'm thinking about those like you know those uh reports and stuff that he was signing and all those things as well so basically he has to do his um normal like you know lessons and at the same time also do his dad's job as well which kind of packs up his schedule so much that he's like oh my god like i cannot do this like each and every day this is going on and i'm, I'm sure this is kind of reduced as as he becomes a king as soon as he becomes a king he will probably not have to attend the lessons that will be he'll be an exempt from that but the other things he'll probably have to do you know like just meet other uh, uh people from the royalty you know kind of have dinner with them go to their um, like i don't know what they do like party or tea party whatever they throw they need he needs to go to them as well and uh, other stuff like as we see portraits the other kingly duties all that stuff meet the citizens as well i guess sometimes and uh, yeah but he'll be exempt from the lessons i'm guessing that that will be like a, a load off his shoulders but that's when he becomes a king not now he he's still not a king so he's, he needs to do everything now and he's like oh my god like yeah <laughs> so he sneaks out he sneaks out and he's like yep no portrait for today i might as well look at my uh, citizens and see what they're doing and all and he gets into like a carriage and falls asleep and like you know there's like thieves i think his name is gaspard yeah uh like at that moment they he thought that those were thieves and uh he gets to like you know he remembers uh rumors that he had gotten to hear before about like you know like the not rumors but the the people from la viestla they came and they were like requesting help from them from bandits and all and okay uh, the guy says recently thieves have moved into an old castle near our town they're attacking every carriage that passes through causing trouble old castle near la viesta okay and then he talks about the legend of count jaste and i think roland or something uh like he's talked about his wife isabella and rival lord roland and like you know both of them were uh where is it yeah uh isabella was uh waiting for her husband's return and the the lily or what what, what flower was that lily i think wasn't it white lily there you go and she was waiting for her husband to come back you know white lily with that showed uh like, like unwilting love or something like that he said and that type of a like you know legend and he's like yeah i know that legend i respected them from the beginning now um <clears throat> he he remembers all that and he's like okay this these people must be those bandits that are like troubling the people from la viesta and that's why he's like all right let me just like you know be quiet here let me just infiltrate their place and then i'll do something and this this the other guy i think what was his name i don't remember um the guy who <laughs> who gaspard kidnapped that guy <laughs> he was also there with him okay we shift to leon now there you go like this made me realize like yeah that was not leon she was asking about asking garam about she was asking probably about someone else because here when he meets leon he meets leon 
uh, she acts like she's surprised and I'm like okay so this is a complete coincidence that happened here so it's probably asking about someone else which uh, which is something that ties to her own personal goal I'm guessing like she said something about her own personal goal so yeah now <laughs> Like they kind of talk like an Emma and um, Leon and Leon kind of asks about what's happening in Santa Bart and she's like yeah everything's fine um, Alfonso is doing a good job all right and then we shift back to Alphonse and <laughs> Gaspar is like oh look I have brought you a <laughs> gift Fana like her daughter and like he opens this thing and he's like wait a minute who are you and like you know like alfonso is there and they start fighting and like i'm i was extremely confused here i'm like wait a minute this girl here fauna she it seems like she knows the guy moro i think that was his name mauro or maro something like that um so she knows him and the the, <laughs> the dad that is gaspar is saying like like oh i brought you a gift i'm like what what type of gift this is a person you kidnapped and then like you know Arman comes out and like what is even happening here and then we see kind of like it's like a little misunderstanding and all right so okay so what was actually happening here the guy says Gaspar says like oh these people they're calling us bandits that's uncalled for he's like this is a personal fight with a proper reason a feud to begin with they are the ones who started this fight the man is respected my daughter okay so basically what actually happened is since mauro this guy he sent a letter to fana and oh, what and that's why he got mad and he's attacking the, them is that what was happening Okay, there you go. The girl says, Mauro, only give me a letter filled with wonderful words. Okay. It's like, I'm sure he paid someone to write it for him. This guy's family is the only family of bankers in that town. Oh my god. I realize now, he, he just attacked them because this guy wrote a, wrote a love letter to this girl. And the girl is pretty happy about that. And the father's like oh that's why i'm you know what that's probably the reason the horror got to him because at from according to the horror he's craving violence you know he's craving violence he just wants to go back to the war field days and that was like a negative emotion that the horror took advantage of um i think it was roland yeah roland um he took advantage of and like it, it's clearly like you know it, you can clearly see that he just wants to fight that's why because of this type of a reason he he kidnapped him and he's like attacking the people the carriages and everything he just wants to fight that's basically it and that's why he's doing this like he's like oh you probably wrote the letter from someone else like paid the money like what like even if that is the case why does it bother you if your daughter is not bothered by it like did he write you a love letter? He wrote the letter to your daughter, not you. Like, then why are you getting bothered? Like, what? <laughs> like, what is what a stupid reason? <laughs> not reason, but an excuse. His reason we very much know. Like, I can understand. His reasoning is like he just wants to fight. That's why he's just like trying to get some kind of a uh, small reason to attack them. And this guy is one of it. He's like, oh, this is a perfect chance. Like, you know, he wrote a letter to my daughter. Let me just attack them. That's that's why. And that's the reason. But the excuse that he makes is like, oh, you probably, you know, like hired someone else to write the letter. That's that's a very stupid excuse. Like, my God, your daughter is OK with it and you're not. OK, great. Like, yeah, like Erman says, isn't this fine? Both of them like each other. And he's like, no, oh. I was like, no, this is not happening. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, it's uncouth good for parents to tear them apart. He's like, he has to pay for laying a hand on my daughter. I immediately demanded money. 
but there was no answers for attack traveling carriages. Then today this idiot comes this way, so I thought I'd tie him up and bring him back to the castle. I'll get plenty of ransom. Man. Great. This is one of the most stupid reasons I've ever heard. But I understand the reason why he made this excuse is because he just wants to fight. That's probably why. Like I doubt he even wants the money. He probably just wants to like you know get into a quarrel with the other like you know with the La Viesta, I think, those people, just so that he can fight. Something like that, I'm guessing. I don't know. Oh boy. Okay, now here uh, we get to know here is like, okay, and uh, Alphonse also asked Ehrman, like, why did you come here? Ehrman is like, <laughs> Ehrman is like, oh, it's nothing. And they say like, who says, I think, uh, Anna is the one who says it, isn't, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I think she's the one who says it, that, oh, like, uh, Ehrman came here because uh, he wants to, um, what do you call it? Like, pick flowers for someone. Uh, those legendary the flowers that used to bloom the white lilies and here's where um <laughs> like at that moment i kind of realized i thought like okay it's probably because of for that girl z what was her name z Jimena or something like that Jimena with an x something like that uh for that girl and that's why she he's here and um, here Mauro talks about a legend of Isabella being a witch and how, you know, like uh, the Count went and saw him, like, you know, like her and he got to know about the rumors that this girl was like, you know, like taking girls, like, you know, like little kids in and like, you know, drowning in, like, you know, eating their, drinking their blood or something. What did he say? Uh... Yeah, Isabella was uh, afraid her beauty would wane while waiting for Count Justin. He kidnapped girls in the area and drank their blood. This completely sounds like Elizabeth Bathory, doesn't it? You know, like bathing in blood of, uh, yeah, of uh, you know, young girls just so that she could keep her you know, beauty, something like that. Yeah. Anyways, um. So yeah, he's like, okay, then the uh, the count came in, he saw that and he killed him, her. And that's why she's a witch. So the uh, flowers are cursed. And that's why I came here so that uh, Fana is not, you know, like doesn't get into any kind of trouble. I came here to warn her. <laughs> and <laughs> Ermin is like, uh, uh, Alfonso is like, oh, so that's why you were here, her uncle. You know, you were here just because you wanted <laughs> to take care of this like you know problem while uh, like you just gave like you know kind of light to me because you know like you you making it seem as if like oh you're just here to like you know pick some flowers but your actual mission here is to uh, like solve this mystery or this thing whatever whatever these type of thing this horror situation and <laughs> and Erman is like oh yeah yeah that's that's definitely that's that's what I was trying to do here yeah now I'm thinking here, like, you know, it would be kind of funny, you know, like if in the uh, final episode or something, <laughs> Alfonso is like, you know what, uncle, like up until now, I knew what you were doing all along. I just, <laughs> I just acted like a fool and acted like I did not understand because I, you know, wanted to trick you and like, you know, make you more serious about stuff and <laughs> wanted to throw you off. <laughs> That'll be funny. But I don't think that's it. Like, he probably doesn't really understand what's happening. And he really believes that Ehrman came here for the horror. Okay, now we see Mauro is like, you know, then taken to the basement. And the guy, he's like drunk and everything. And um, Roland comes out as a horror. And he's like, oh, like, you know, like you want war, don't you? You know, you, you just want to kill people. Yeah, actually he just wants to creep, kill freely. I grant that wish your, of yours. And gets into him. And this, as I said, this shows that he just wanted and probably wanted an excuse to start a fight. And that's why he was doing all of this. And the horror gets to him. Uh, Mauro and Fana gets out of the dungeon or whatever. 
and goes to the basement finds out a skeleton of isabella holding um the count and here's where uh Herman and alfonso happens upon like some written records of the past where it's written completely that isabella was a uh, like you know like a mafai no was it written in the Yeah, yeah, it was written in the books, wasn't it? Yeah, Isabella's diary. Okay, sorry, Isabella's diary. There you go. Now, here's everything is written there. Isabella was a Makai alchemist, which I'm, I like, you know, guess from the beginning, kind of, I realized that, like, obviously, like, any type of people who are called as a witch are either Makai alchemist or they're like Makai, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call them? Makai knights, something like that. So, Isabella was a Makai alchemist and she came here because these two were horrors like this this uh, story was extremely i have to say interesting and unique because there's these two people who wanted to like you know like who was uh, wait a minute what was the story like uh, one of them was jealous wasn't it mark alchemist you think count just and roland were both horrors okay roland became a horror first i think that's what he said Um, it looks Lord Roland became a horror first. He became one because he wanted to become stronger than like what a weird type of a story. So Roland became a horror because he wanted more power than Count Just. He became a horror and he gained more power than Count Just. And then Count Just became jealous of Roland's strength. And he became a horror. Like Oh my god, what uh So Wow And then they started fighting against each other and like competing competing against each other who will be like kind of consuming more people or something like that and Isabella came here to stop it And okay then we get to know the actual reasoning of the like you know, white lily the white lily was a Makai uh, like Mado tool and her blood was the thing that was actually sealing Count uh, Juste in the basement. Uh, Mauro falls over and just drops whatever liquid on the blood and it just wipes off and Count Just is out. He grabs um, Fana and I, I don't know why he left Mauro. He probably just smacked Mauro away or something. That's why Mauro didn't die. And he just grabbed Fana and came out. And at that moment, I thought, wow, this situation, like, you know, the, like, the, the guy, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Gaspard with uh, Count. At, I, at that moment, I did not know it was actually uh, Roland in, 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 in his, in the horror that was, uh, like, you know, on, on, on top of him, on, on him. So I was like, wow, what a weird type of a coincidence, isn't it? Like the, the story is like both of the horrors were fighting against each other. And now again, both two, both two horrors are confronting each other. Gaspard is here and <laughs> Count, uh, like, you know, the Count is also here. And then he just comes up and says like, yeah, how are you, Count? Uh, just a, I'm Roland and I'm like, all right. So basically it's the same situation. History repeats itself and yeah, now I thought at that moment, I thought maybe Fana was like a reincarnation of Isabella or something like that. But turns out it's just not that. The guy is calling him uh, Isabella, calling her Isabella just because, like, you know, just for the sake of it. Like, he's like, yeah, I don't care if it's Isabella or not. I just want, you know, to uh, consume her blood. And that's just it. So they start fighting. And uh, yeah, just was almost trying, like, you know, almost going to kill uh, Isabella, uh, is not Isabella, Fana, but um, Alphonse comes in, stops her, stops him uh, and defeats him. The, 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 the battle was quite easy as soon as they transformed, as I said, you know, like when they were in the human forms, the battle was a little bit difficult, but as soon as he transformed to Garo and um, uh, Ermin transformed to Zoro, they just one shot at the other person. But during this commotion, Fana falls, falls down, <laughs> but Mauro is there. Mauro tries to help her, but he also falls down. 
<laughs> and then Alfonso goes and like you know helps them out. And yeah, I guess the ending is kind of sad if you think about it from Fana's point of view because her, her dad died. But yeah, Mauro is okay and I'm guessing everything will be fine from here onwards. And Alfonso's like, yep, no more work today. Like enough is enough. I've done enough work for today. And that's where it ends. It's a very simple episode, I feel like. It's another one of those episodes where uh, I doubt anything, like, you know, that... Because this is like a, what do you call it? Like, uh, like a, a break, a break type of an episode. Like, nothing much happened. This is like a side story, I'm guessing. Like, these people probably will never come back again, you know, in the future episodes. Like, Fana and uh, Mauro, they're just for this episode. So, yeah, it's like just one of those episodes. So that's it. So thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to episode number um, 12 and uh, no, wait, what? 13 and, 13 and 14. <laughs> 13 and 14 of Garo Hono no Kokuin. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know. And I'll check them out. So yeah, and that's it. So Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I'll be back with two more episodes of Garo Hono no Kokuin next week. So see you guys then. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.